Hey, everybody. On today's Locked On Bama, we're going to talk about Jordan Addison, the Blitnikoff winner from last year, who is uh, still out there on the market. Just last week, we thought it was a done deal to USC. Maybe not so much anymore. We'll talk about that. We're also going to continue Jimmy Stein's roster countdown, which is oh so popular every single year. So stick with us on Locked On Bama. Locked On Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody, and welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me, Jimmy Stein, that's him. Jimmy, how are you today? Oh, very excited. For whatever reason, uh, I know it's uh, it's it's 12 weeks from tomorrow, but that will be the NFL Hall of Fame game, which to me just kind of kicks off the new football season. Only 12 weeks from tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to it. Jaguars versus Raiders. Jaguars versus Raiders. I'm down with it, man. Hey, tomorrow, uh, or as you're watching this uh, today, the um, – the NFL schedule, the full schedule comes out. I'm always excited about that. My son's going to be going to Arizona State, so I'm hoping to make it to a Phoenix game or Arizona game um, in Phoenix. Or, and he's a big Eagles fan, so I'm hoping to go to the Eagles game again. But, Jimmy, let's start off with a guy uh, who will be going pro next year, and that's Jordan Addison. He looked for all the world to be inking with USC just last week. Now things have gotten interesting. Um, it, he's at Texas as we speak. I assume he'll be at Alabama sometime soon. He's already been seen throwing around the old pigskin with Bryce Young. Um, what are you hearing here? Could could this guy really end up at Alabama? Yeah, uh, and and you know, I, I, as each day progresses, I think there's a better chance of it. Now, you know, I still feel like okay, right now we all have to bet. You know, where where's Jordan Addison going? My bet is USC. Uh, and my next guess is Texas, and my third guess is Alabama. But about a week ago, I thought there was virtually zero chance it would end up at Alabama, or just barely above zero. I think each day that that that, that goes is is one day more likely. It's Alabama. I think Alabama makes a ton of sense for him in terms of you know uh, showing off you know for the NFL, playing with Bryce, playing in that Alabama offense, uh, you know. Uh, you know, and, and USC uh, to to an extent gives him a, a similar situation with such a high quality proven quarterback in Caleb Williams and that Lincoln Riley offense. But uh, yeah, I, I think there's a chance, uh, and I wasn't saying that a few days ago, but I still think it's USC. I think that's been the plan from 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 when he got in the portal. Uh, I just wonder, and, and I've told you this before, Luke. I just wonder. Is it possible? I mean, it doesn't it feel everybody's listening to this, doesn't it feel like the NCAA crackdown began with the Jordan Addison story? And if that's the case, if 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 it was the Jordan Addison story that made the NCAA go, we need to take a look at how this is working out. USC could feel like, whoa, there's a little too much heat in the kitchen for us here. We we sort of instigated the crackdown with this. We are gonna uh, at least as far as Addison goes, may, maybe we're not going to be as aggressive about our uh, portal rating and our uh, money offering. So I, I think that that is possible. And if that's the case, then Addison could end up anywhere but USC. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Um, it's kind of funny, though, that uh, it, the NCAA scares anybody from doing anything right now. Um, well, that's a fan thing to say. I, I, I put it this way: that's a fan thing to say, and, and it might even be an aggressive athletic director's thing to say. I'll tell you who doesn't say that: presidents of the universities. Yeah. They don't want that. They, they don't want that attention. Then, and, and they, they, the presidents are still to some degree here in charge. And and I'm not saying this happened, guys. I'm not reporting it happened. It's just sort of easy for me to imagine the president of Pittsburgh calling the president of USC going, you're really okay with, with how this is going down and USC go USC's president going, well, well tell me your interpretation of what went down. And then he hears it. And then he gets his athletic director on the phone and saying, look, we're not going to conduct business like this. We're just not going to do it. Uh, yeah. That's easy for me to imagine. I, I, I have no idea if it did. No, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and, Frankly, 
I think the president was okay playing, you know, hear no evil, see no evil until another president calls him. I mean, right, I don't think right. you, if, if your theory is correct, I don't think the USC president is so oblivious to what is going on to be like, right. Oh my God, I didn't know that could possibly have happened. Well, he might've, you know, it, it would depend on what Pitt's facts are. And I don't even know that the phone call happens. It's not so much a theory as it is, as it is, Jimmy, try to explain why Jordan Addison has not yet signed with USC. That's good. And this is me trying to explain that. You know, uh, now my feeling is he that's exactly what he's going to do, uh, sign with USC. Boy, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say he either signs with Alabama or Texas at this point. And if he signs like with Alabama, uh, woe be unto any opponent on Alabama's schedule next year. I mean – and man, it's going to really sort of freak out the wide receiver room. I would think we got we could really have three new total wide receivers that weren't on the roster last year. All three of them starting, and it's not crazy to think that could happen when we have some other five star receivers on the roster. That's kind of bananas. Yeah, it, it really is, and it's surprising on the one hand. Uh, on the one hand, it's easy to go. Is, this has to be some sort of a statement about the receivers that we've recruited to the roster from high schools. Uh, those guys are young. Those guys are young. I'll buy it that it's a statement as to some some older kids maybe that are on the roster, but but not. Look, look, we're we're, we're not going to the portal because we're, we don't think Aaron Anderson's no good. We're not going to the portal because we don't think Kendrick Law or Shaz Preston are good. We're going to the portal because we're assuming that they're probably not going to be ready to, yeah. to, to be our leading receiver when we play Texas A&M. Uh, we, we need that guy, and that's why they, they've they gone to the portal. It's, it's really the age thing. I broke it down on, on three not too long ago, and we came up with the fact that, look, they really had to go to the portal for two reasons at wide receiver. One is all the guys that left early. You know, Mechie and Jamo could have been back. I mean, they, mm -hmm. they didn't have to go pro. They, they left and went pro early. And, and and the Judy Rugs, all of them left early. Uh, so really, it's 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 those guys leaving early that created it, along with uh, I'm going to choose my words carefully, but screw it, uh, running two guys off. You know, and 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 one guy that went to Kentucky, one guy that went to Texas, sort of got run off. And and, and those would have been older kids, by the way. Those would have been had they developed normally, followed the rules. There's a good chance those two would be in the first team rotation and we wouldn't have gone to the portal. No, that's a good point. Uh, Jimmy, want to take a minute before we get back into your roster countdown to tell everybody about Bet Online. Our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all of the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs, the Major League Baseball scores, fights, and even next season in NFL futures. Bet online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs to esports and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and actions. Bet online is where the game starts. Jimmy, let's get back into your roster countdown. Um, we've had some good reaction from Twitter. Uh, people saying that they really love this, and uh, we love it too. It's a lot of fun. So let's start uh, with number 95, Monkel Goodwine. Um, right. What's, what are you thinking here? Uh, he impressed me this spring. Uh, I, I don't think he's yet ready for the first team rotation, uh, but he could be. If we're looking, if he could be, right now we got five, right? He could be the sixth guy it, it, this fall. It would not surprise me if he's the sixth guy. Uh, if not, this is a major candidate to be in the first rotation starting next spring. Uh, he's going to be good. Uh, well, I mean, there's – like you said, it's when you do this countdown, it can be a little difficult because a guy like Goodman, we just don't know a ton yet. Right. Um, I know really that we, we were very excited to get him. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think he's got a ton of potential. I think he um, – Boy, I hate to say he was looked at looked upon as a project. I don't want to say that, right. but I do feel like he probably need a little muscle, a little weight. Correct. Um, and um, hope that he's put that on. And then, hey, fingers crossed, because I think defensive line is where the game right. is won. Usually, you know, outside of there was a there was a point, you know, when we were following football a long time ago. People won't believe it now in 2022, but there was a point where 
if you took a lineman, he, he was almost just an automatic red shirt. Like very few didn't red shirt, even at an Alabama. I mean, it was like, well, you know, any lineman is going to spend a year in the weight room before they're really even practicing with the football team. That's sort of how it was in the 70s and 80s and, and into the 90s. Uh, it wasn't until juniors routinely went pro, kids trained year round with experts, uh, high school football got more advanced. It wasn't until all that happened that, that, that more linemen started playing early. But, but no, the, the normal human development has been redshirt the big kids. And, and, and whenever you have a big kid like Goodwine that does redshirt, it doesn't mean a thing. I mean, there, you know, there would be a fan somewhere going, well, if you redshirted, that means, you know, they didn't think he was good. Well, Quinnen Williams redshirted. He's the best defensive line we've ever had, maybe in the history of the program. And he redshirted. So that that's nuts. Uh, I, I think it's just normal for uh, for linemen to redshirt. The ones that play right away are uh, their exceptions. They're not the rule. Jimmy, let's uh, go ahead and take a break. And when we come back, we will talk about number 94, DJ Dale. And uh, we'll also talk about Jamirian Latham when we return. I uh, want to tell everybody really quickly before we go to this break that you need to go check out uh, Locked On NBA Big Board host Rafael Barlow from NBA Draft Junkies. And the author of the NBA Big Board newsletter is joined by Richard Stamen, Sam Ferris, and Leif Thulin. Leaf Thulin, what a name. That Giving cool. fans an in depth look yeah. at the NBA draft, mock draft, player rankings, and of course the big boards. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. That is Locked On NBA Big Board. Yeah, you got to listen to that just for that dude's name. All right, Jimmy, uh, DJ Dale, number 94 in your program, number no, number one in your heart. Um, big dude. Yeah. Uh, I would say a guy who, okay trying to put this as PC as possible. I wouldn't say, he's re- I wouldn't say he's regressed. I would say he is not progressed the way we thought he all would. We still see a ton of potential in this young man though. Well, you know, it's the knee injuries, you know, yeah. he, he, he showed up and not only immediately impressed, we're just talking about red shirting. This dude plays the most red shirting position possible on defense, nose guard. And not only plays as a freshman, he starts. He started the first college football game he ever played in. So there was all reason, all sorts of reasons to have high expectations here. But then he hurt every knee he's got. I mean, it wasn't one knee; it was both. And and, and I think it's taken him, uh, you know, more than a year, if not two years, to get back to where he was. But I thought, particularly at the end of last season. Uh, he looked good to me. I, I I think he started coming around, and 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 by the end d- during that stretch drive when the defense was really playing well down the stretch, I think a lot of that had to do with with DJ Dale in the middle. And I, I think he's going to have a really nice senior year. Is it going to be Mathis? Is it going to be Barmore? Is it going to be Deron Payne's senior year at nose guard? No, I don't think he. I don't think he's that guy. But what I think he is is very solid. And boy, if you, you want to talk about a guy that's underrated by the fans is the very solid guy. You know, fans see the spectacular and everybody else sucks. Well, that, that's not really even remotely true. Uh, DJ Hall is a, is a very solid player, and I think he's going to have a really solid senior year and be a big part of, uh, of the defensive success. Um. I do too, and I really want him to burst onto the scene. I, I, I think I've even seen a mock draft where he goes in the first round. That's crazy. I mean, That's and I just say that because how is he going to test well? And what position is he going to play in the NFL? You know, the NFL doesn't have a ton of 3-4 teams. He's probably going to have to move to tackle. Who knows? Maybe he's better suited for a one-gap tackle job. That that could be the case. But I, I see him as a, as a mid-round pick, third to fifth round kind of guy. Uh, which is a compliment. It's a compliment. Uh, definitely. And then let's go to number 93, Jamarian Latham. Um, this is a guy that came out of a 1A school. Um, he did get some action last year. Good, great. Um, mm-hmm. What do you think here? Is there a ton of potential here? It, I mean, it. boy, I just hadn't heard his name a lot, I guess, is all I can right. say. I, I, I would like to. You know, you hear about guys that are coming on strong and his name just hadn't come out of people's in the nose mouth. That's the worst <laughs> sentence I've ever said. 
<laughs> you know, we had a really good spring last last year and, and a really big A day. And then uh, then in the fall seemed kind of quiet, although I did. I need to rewind and figure this out because not too long ago, I accident I wasn't watching the game tape yet. I'm going to do that closely soon. But uh, I, I came across Alabama, Georgia national championship game on on ESPN, U or something or SEC network. And, and I watched for a couple minutes and I looked down and we're in goal line defense and I, and I see 93 and I'm like, no, nah, I didn't just see 93. I literally paused the TV screen and rewound to verify. And it was true. It was 93 that was out there. And I, I was totally stunned. Uh, but yeah, there's Latham playing goal line defense for Alabama in the national championship game against the Georgia Bulldogs. So pretty, I, I don't know what led to that. My guess is it might've been an injury, but it just goes to show that that he's on the cusp. And, and yeah. I think that's the best way to describe it. Here's a kid that's not in the lineup. He's not in the first team rotation, but he's also not a guy they've written off. Uh, he, he is on the cusp of becoming a contributor, but this fall feels kind of like a now or never time for him. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, the now or never uh, clock has been moved up for everybody at every position yeah. now, especially at Alabama. I mean, if you don't show potential within the first year, year and a half, I mean, it's tough. Not everybody can do the Mac Jones thing. Right. And see, it's easier to do the Mac Jones thing because we we kind of knew we had a dude, but we had some real dudes in front of him. And um, he was – he. there's only one guy that can play quarterback. Right. So, uh, you know, anyway, I, I, I'm pulling for him. Um, I, I, I like him a lot. I like his skill set. I think he can be a thing, but uh, like you said, it's boy, you just don't have a lot of room for growth when it comes to Alabama. You got to grow up quick, uh, or you're going to be in the transfer portal. You know, and and here's a good question. We'll, we'll devote a whole show to this. You know, last year Alabama took two kids out of the portal, walk-ons not counting. They took two kids out of the portal, and and Toa Toa and Jamison. This year it's been what six, and and, and we're we're even considering a seventh. You know, in Addison. You know, what's going to be the portal number for Alabama? Uh, I, I tend to think what we're seeing this year is a bit of a ceiling. Uh, I, I think six might be sort of a sort of a max, I, I think. But but we're going to find out. Obviously, it can change year to year. One interesting thing, Luke, is we could lose a lot of players off this team to the NFL. And, and if you lose most of your starters, you got to think, boy, if you lose starters, you go to the portal, right? Um uh, so who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe 10 guys next year. But it's a real interesting subject. What's the normal number uh, of portal guys that, that you see Alabama signing every year? I don't know. Maybe if we lose a bunch of receivers and a tight end, maybe we can get uh, a Jai Hall and Jaleel Willingsley back. <laughs> I wonder if that will ever happen, that somebody we... transfers out and, like, it's just not working out here. They go somewhere else and they're like, you know, I kind of miss you. It's like going back to an ex-girlfriend. Yeah, I want to know what Ajay's uh, uh, attitude is about Texas having uh, Jordan Addison around. You know, like, hey, Ajay, I mean, are your feelings hurt? Because now, Texas, you, you know, you came here to be the guy, and now now they're going to bring in the Bolitnikoff guy. He's probably like, why do y'all think he's better than I am? He's, I, I'm sure he's handling it very maturely. <laughs> um, now, now right. by the way, uh, Hull and Billingsley could only uh, portal back if they were graduates because they burned – They've burned their free portal ride. Uh, they have to graduate before they could portal back, uh, unless they're willing to sit out, which doesn't sound like a Hall or Billingsley thing. <laughs> no, it didn't really sound like that's their forte. <laughs> uh, all right, that's going to do it for this episode. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in, making us your first listen. Please keep up with us. Please subscribe, and uh, we'll talk to you again tomorrow. Until then, roll tide, everybody. Roll tide.